How do we compute averages or expectations for continuous random variables? Well, the answer is pretty simple. All we're going to do is start with our idea of discrete random variables and replace all the sums with integrals. So remember, for a discrete random variable, the expected value was defined to be this e of x, which took the values in x and added them up weighted by their probabilities. Okay? Well, probabilities of specific values in continuous random variables are zero, but they do have densities of probabilities. So what we're going to do is define the expected value e of x of a continuous random variable to be the following. So there's this e of x, which is the integral of the values x weighted by their density values from the PDF. Okay, so this is our formula for expectation or average or mean for continuous random variable. We can do the same thing for a function of a continuous random variable. So to take the expectation of a function, we're just going to um, put that function inside the integral and weight it by the PDF value. So here g is the function I'm interested in. Maybe it's the square of x. And I'm going to plug that into this integral, weight it by the PDF, the density, and integrate from minus infinity to infinity. One little technical point here is that this formula actually works even if g of x ultimately is not continuous. Okay, so um, let's say I had a continuous random variable and I had a function g of x that ended up being discrete. That can happen. You can still use this formula. Okay, all of our properties uh, carry over. So we have linearity of expectation. So if I have uh, two constants, let's call them a and b, and I'm interested in the expectation of this linear function, I can just move the constants outside the expectation. So if I have e of ax plus b, I can change that to a of ex plus b. Why is that true? Well, same reason as before, I can write the expectation as an integral of the function, and then I can see from the integral, I can pull out this a and split the b off into its own case. And then for the b part, normalization tells me this integral of the PDF is just 1, and I get a times e of x plus b. We define the variance and the st standard deviation in the same way. So the variance was defined to be the expectation of x minus its mean squared. So it's basically an average of how x uh, varies around its mean. Equivalently, we could write the same thing as e of x squared minus the square of e of x. That's the alternate variance formula. Standard deviation is just the square root of variance to put it back into the original units. If we have a linear function and we want the variance, so we would again have constants a and b, and we would look at the variance of ax plus b, and that would just be a squared times the variance of x. The shift b wouldn't matter, and a gets squared because the variance is squaring everything inside. Okay, we're going to just work through all of this using an example to get our bearings. So uh, as an example, consider this triangle-shaped PDF. Okay, so it goes up and then it goes down, and you can trust that this has area 1. So this has the following formula. It's 0, then it's x, then it's 2 minus x uh, from 1 downward, and then it's 0. So basically it has slope 1 until it reaches 1, and then it has slope negative 1 until it reaches 2. First thing we're going to do, just to practice, we're going to work out the CDF, um, and we're going to use this formula. So we have this integration variable, u, and we're going to integrate the PDF up to x. And we're going to do this case by case, because it's a little tricky. Okay, so first, um, we're going to start out um, in the first case we have in the case by case formula, x is less than 0. So the CDF there is just going to be the integral of 0 and that's just going to be 0. Next, we go from 0 to 1. So as we're doing that, we're plugging in the value uh, that's between 0 and 1. So first, it's going to integrate from minus infinity to 0. And what it's going to see is just 0. Then I'm integrating from 0 to x, because I have a value between 0 and 1. And that is going to be u du, because the formula says that f of x is x. And when I replace that with u, it just becomes u. Okay. This is just going to become 0 plus 1 half u squared from 0 to x, so it's 1 half x squared. Next, from 1 to 2, I'm going to work out the CDF, so I'm going to have an integral from minus infinity to 0 of 0, then from 0 to 1, 
of u. So it's the same thing we were doing before, but now I cross over the whole range and then from 1 to x because x finishes between 1 and 2. And I'm going to plug in 2 minus u because I'm using u to stand in for the original x. It's going to work out here to be 0 plus 1 half u squared from 0 to 1 and then plus 2u minus 1 half u squared from 1 to x. And if I work all this out, I'm going to get 0 plus 1 half plus 2x minus 1 half x squared minus 2 plus 1 half. So it's minus 1 half x squared plus 2x minus 1. And finally, when I get greater than uh, 2, I know this has to be 1 because I've already integrated um, the entire PDF. Right? So now the PDF is going to be 0, so there's no more probability to absorb, and I know probability can't be greater than 1, so I've hit 1 at the end. Okay, that is the full CDF. So let's summarize all of that. So here is a plot of the CDF that we just worked out, this um, curve. And case by case, what we worked out was that it was 0 for a while, and then it was 1 half x squared, then minus 1 half x squared plus 2x minus 1, and then 1. Okay, and the range was the same kind of cases as before. Now we can work out the probability of an interval. So what's the probability I fall between uh, 3 fourths and 5 fourths? So one way I could have done this was by um, integrating the PDF between 3 fourths and 5 fourths. But since I have the CDF, I've basically done every possible integral, and I'm going to use that since it's uh, more direct. Okay, so the probability of an interval is just the difference in CDF values. So the difference between CDF at 5 fourths and CDF at 3 fourths. And that's going to work out to be at 5 fourths, I'm plugging into this minus x squared plus 2x uh, minus 1 formula. And at uh, 3 fourths, just the 1 half x squared formula. So this works out to be minus 25 30 seconds plus 5 halves minus 1 minus 9 30 seconds. So it's 3 half minus 34 30 seconds. It's 14 30 seconds, that's 7 16 Okay, that's the value. Had I integrated the PDF directly from 3 fourths to 5 fourths, I would have gotten the same thing. Let's look at the expectation. So what is the um, average or expected value of x? Okay, intuitively, let's look at the plot and figure out what this should be. Remember, the um, the expected value should be the center of mass. And this is a plot that is symmetric and centered at 1. So the center of mass should be at 1. And so I expect to get the answer 1. And we'll see if that works out. So the formula is to take the values of x, weight them by the probability density, and integrate from minus infinity to infinity. Because I have a case-by-case -case formula, I need to break this into four parts. So I'm going to have a part up to 0. That's just going to be x times 0. Apart from 0 to 1, that's going to be x times x, because the PDF from 0 to 1 is x. I'm going to have a part from 1 to 2. That's x times 2 minus x, because the PDF there is 2 minus x. And then again, I'm going back down to 0. OK, so two of these integrals are easy. And then the other one is 1 third x cubed from 0 to 1, and x squared minus 1 third x cubed from 1 to 2, and then again 0. OK. So I can just plug in and work out all these values. So I'm just evaluating all the different um, things that I have here. And I'm going to ultimately get something that you can verify for yourself is just going to be 1. So that checks out with my intuition. What about x squared? So I don't have an intuition for what x squared should be. Obviously, it should be greater than 0, but that's about all I have. So I'm going to plug into the formula for expected value of function. I put x squared times the PDF, and I integrate. Again, I'm going to have a case um, where it's, the PDF is 0. I'm going to have a case where the PDF is x. And I'm going to have a case where the PDF is uh, 2 minus x. And I've picked the integration regions to match. And finally, I go back down to 0. OK, so the first and last integrals here are just going to be 0. I'm not even going to bother working them out. Then I'm going to have another integral, which is 1 fourth x fourth, 0 to 1, plus 2 thirds x cubed minus 1 fourth x fourth. And if I start plugging in values and working all this out, I'm going to settle into something that you can verify for yourself is going to be 7 sixths. Okay, so let's just follow this through. It's a half plus 16 minus 12 minus 2 over 3, which is 7 sixths. And remember, in uh, this specific course in the homeworks, we're really asking you mainly to set up the integrals and their limits correctly rather than to get the specific values. So we're more interested in how you set up the integrals.
Finally, if I want to get the variance, uh, I've done the calculations already, so I'm going to uh, use the alternate variance formula, which is e of x squared minus the square of e of x. And I already have both those values, so it's just going to be 7 6 squared, sorry, 7 6 minus 1 squared. That's going to be 1 6. So that's going to be the variance. Let's do one more example here. So let's say I'm interested in this particular function, which is going to be a little bit strange. So it's minus 1, 0, or plus 1. It's minus 1 when x is less than 1 half, 1, 0 up to 3 halves, and then it's going to be plus 1. So visually, it's this discontinuous piecewise function that looks like these jumps. OK, it's totally fine to have a function like this um, because I can integrate any function I like with this formula. So if I want to determine the expected value of this function, what I'm going to do is just use um, the definition for expected value of a function. I'm going to integrate from minus infinity to infinity of g of x, of f of x. And now I need to recognize there are going to be a lot of cases here. So um, now there are cases for the PDF and there are cases for the function. And so I need to work out all those different regions. So I'm going to have a region from minus infinity to 0, where I just have 0. Another region where I have from 0 to 1 half. Okay, And let's just look for a second here. I'm going to have up to 1 half. g of x is minus 1. And between 0 and 1, the PDF is x. And so we're already there. So I've plugged in those two values. From 1 half to 1, the PDF won't change, but the function will change to 0. Then from 1 half to 3 fourths, um, the function stays 0, but the PDF changes to 2 minus x. Then the PDF is going to stay the same, but the function changes to plus 1. And now the PDF is going to change back to 0. Okay, So I had to track all of those cases very carefully. Most of them are going to be 0, which is nice. And I'm just going to end up with um, two things to evaluate. So I'm going to evaluate the first one from 0 to 1 half. And then the second one, I'm going to evaluate from um, 3 halves to 2. This ultimately works out to minus 1 eighth plus 4 minus 2 minus uh, 3 minus 9 eighths. And all of this works out to be a 0. And that's actually good because intuitively, if you look at this, these two pictures and line them up, they're both kind of symmetric in a way. So the PDF is symmetric. And so you can see that um, part of the PDF is getting multiplied by 0 in this function. So let's not worry about that. Then there's a part getting multiplied by plus 1. And that has um, the same shape as the part getting multiplied by minus 1. And so it makes sense intuitively that those are going to cancel out. Um, and that's exactly what happens. Okay, So we just verified that for ourselves.